Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation with complex numbers. This problem looks familiar, I hope I haven't made a video about this before, but even if I did, this video will be different. You know why? Because this is 2025. Did you know that? 2025 is 45 squared. Anyways, that's a different story. We have this equation and where does this equation come from? Where does the idea for this equation come from? I want to say thank you to Physic Trapella for this idea. If you have any problem ideas, please share with us in the comment section to any video. Okay, so I really like this problem because it kind of looks simple, but it's also very interesting. So how do you solve for z in an equation like this? z to the power i equals i to the power z. I know what some of you are saying. Oh, isn't that obvious? You're just going to replace z with something and then it will work. Okay, great. But how do we know that's the only solution? So we're going to explore a little deeper here. We're going to look at a couple different things. One thing we need to talk about is the, the complex exponentiation. How do we express a complex number to another complex number? You probably know whenever you have something like z squared and z is complex, it just means z times z, right? But when you have z to the power i, you write the z i times, i is not even a rational number. It's not even real. How do you write something i times? There's no way. It's just imaginary, right? So the repeated multiplication does not work here. We need to think differently. And thanks to Euler, we have a really nice formula. z to the i can be expressed as e to the power i ln z. Similarly, i to the power z can be expressed as e to the power z ln i. And we want these to be equal. Great. They're both exponential, so we can write this as e to the i ln z equals e to the z ln i, which results in something interesting because if you just forget about the e's or natural log both sides, uh-oh, we end up with i ln z equals z ln i. Okay, great. And from here, can you solve for z? Probably. Uh, but we need to go back and check something real quick. Let's go ahead and do this first. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep it like this. And you're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking z equals i would work because it does, right? If z is i, it satisfies the equation. So z equals i is definitely a solution. You probably knew that. But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution? Or if there are any other solutions, how do you find them? Or are there any other solutions? How do you prove that there are no other solutions if that's the case? Make sense? A lot of good questions. So we need to explore a little deeper. So first of all, we know z equals i is a solution, but one thing that we kind of ignored on purpose was the presence that, okay, if e to the power something equals e to the power something else, that doesn't mean the exponents are always equal. Because why is that the case? Let me tell you. e to the i ln z equals e to the z ln i. Now there's something in uh, complex analysis that's super duper important that one can be complexified as to e to the power 2 pi n i. Why is that important? Because we can write 1 as an exponential, n is an integer, and this is basically 2 pi radians or any multiple of 2 pi will always give us 1 with what modulus 1. On the unit circle, that just represents 1 all the time. Make sense? So that means we can actually take an equation like this and multiply one side by e to the power 2 pi n i, because it's 1, why do you not multiply both sides? Because that would be meaningless. It's like adding the same number to both sides, right? So now this gives us something different. i ln z equals z ln i plus, because we're going to add the exponents, 2 pi n i. Now, our goal is to solve for z. Well, one thing that I can definitely do is bring the i's together. Maybe write the i times ln z minus 2 pi n, and then set it equal to z ln i. Okay, I think at this point, we need to talk about ln i. What is ln i, right? How do you natural log a complex number? And we have a formula, ln of a complex number 
is maybe I should use W because ln Z is already there. ln W can be written as ln absolute value of W plus I times the argument of W. Of course, I'm assuming the, uh, the principal value of the natural log because it's multi-valued and I'm taking the principal argument. If, uh, if it's not, usually they write it with an uppercase A. I'm not sure if it's standard. Maybe, uh, I'm not completely sure. So that's why I just want to write it as ARG like this. But the argument of I is going to be pi over 2 because this is where I lives, right? So it's going to make a pi over 2 radians in the argand plane. Argand with a D at the end. These may be silent. I don't know. So where do you go from here? Well, by using the formula, this is just going to be pi over 2. And then this is 0 because ln 1 is 0. So ln i can be replaced with the following. I can replace it with i times pi over 2. Here's the problem with that. I need to add multiples of 2 pi. So the same thing applies here. So if I just write 2 pi k, I don't want to use the same n. Uh, this gives me a better you know, solution. And then we kind of need to get rid of the i's. And of course, we have the ln z and the z together and kind of try to solve from here. The problem with this approach, maybe there's a way to do it with the Lambert's w function. Let me rewrite this, the clean version. Okay. Uh, I can't really think of something right now, but if n is zero, I have a nice solution. Maybe we should talk about that, shouldn't we? If n is zero, then we get ln z equals z times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then from here, we can kind of put these two together, ln z over z or z over ln z, z over ln z. ln z over z is probably better. Uh, I'm going to write it like this. And then kind of write this as z to the power negative 1 times ln z to the power negative 1. I want to multiply both sides by negative 1 because that's what the coefficient is going to be. This will give us negative pi over 2 minus 2 pi k, but that's basically the same as 2 pi m because negative k is also an integer. And then I can apply Lambert's w function on both sides and that'll do the trick. After I write it this way, of course, there's a caveat here. We have to be careful. First write it as ln z to the power negative 1 and then e to the power ln z to the power negative 1 and then now you can apply Lambert's w function on both sides. When you apply the w, that's going to give you the following. This will be ln z to the power negative 1. This will be w of negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. If m is 0, there's a way to manipulate that. But if not, then it's kind of harder. But this will give you negative ln z. So you can multiply both sides by negative 1 and that should give you this. Let me just write it in a more general form. And notice that I had to make an assumption for n equals 0. But without that, maybe it can be solved. And now we need to do e to the power both sides. So z is going to be e to the power negative w of negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. For those of you who are new to Lambert's w function, let me just tell you what it is. Lambert's w function is a special function, which is the inverse function for t to the t. So if your input is t to the t, your output will be t. Of course, there are two branches and so many other things regarding this. Okay, let me show you what Wolfram Alpha provides. Ta -da -da -da. Looks like this is pretty close to zero and this looks like i. So z equals i is a solution approximately. And z equals negative i also happens to be a solution. Can you verify that? Are there any other solutions? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.